They were desperate last night, and we came to a game with a sick quarterback who has a bad knee, and they kept running the ball with him because it feels like they're reaching for anything. And to lose that game, and you, uh, you're desperate in that situation, I think sometimes you can say some things that are a little bit out there, but they don't seem like they're not dedicated. They made what seems to have been a fairly significant coaching change in week 15. Right. right? I mean, that's, not, that's not the act of a team that thinks everything's great. Right. Right. So, like, I mean, and look, I, mean, I think for the most part, the defense played better last night. It seemed like it had an impact until the last drive, oh, obviously. Better. But uh, I, think, <laughs> I think, you know, you, you, this is a team that knows things are not going the way they, they went last year, obviously, right. for them. And something needs to be different. And if Jalen Hurts is up there saying, I don't know, maybe we're not committed enough, maybe we need to work hard, whatever that is, like they're looking for answers right now. Fortunately, uh, the teams they have left on their schedule could be the kind that provide them. We talk about coaches, or at least I talk about coaches a lot in how they communicate through the media. They're communicating to the players, they're mm -hmm. communicating to the fans, and I think Jalen Hurts is trying to push any button he can. Sure. And I think he says something that sounds dramatic because he's trying to wake up his team. So, so let, let's not even, let, let's not parse his words. Yeah. Let's live in the reality of what happened, okay? You are, you, the ball's on the eight yard line, you're staring Drew Locke in Drew the face. Locke. With no disrespect to him. That's no. not Patrick Mahomes. That's second Josh game. Allen. Second game in a long time. And, 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 and you've got you've made the change this week. Th this is your moment, Jeff. Yes. You have it right there in front of you. What yeah. happened? They had everything in front of them. They knew what's on the line. Basically, the NFC East is theirs. 19-year curse is broken, whatever it is. And they don't get it done. And again, the Metcalf made a great catch on the one. But the, the first one, he's wide open in the middle. The touchdown that he throws, he gets behind Bradbury for another touchdown. It's just, it's, it's one of those you got to have it moments. And right. teams have these moments throughout the season where you know, very rarely in football, do you know when those moments are going to be. Clearly last night, you knew that was the moment and they didn't get it done. Yeah. I mean, call it the curse of Big Dom, whatever it is you want to call it. He's not on the sidelines. He's Suddenly they can't do anything. I mean, yeah. the, that, but you made an interesting point and an important one there. We don't need to say their defense is in trouble. Right. They said right. their defense For sure. is they felt in they needed trouble. to make a significant right? and, change. And they did that. That's not something that teams with Super Bowl aspirations usually do a week before Christmas. So the problem is we're past the point in the season where you can make personnel changes, right? I mean, you can you can shuffle roles around, but you're still got the I mean, and the fact is the players in their secondary have not played well enough this year. I mean, we saw, you know, Bradbury last night with a rough game. Slay, not even on the field. He was unable to play last night. So they need better performance from that unit, no matter who's coaching it. Uh, and right now, they, they don't have those answers back. So I understand we're going to be critical of the person who's closest to the ball when it is caught. But I also think that this, the strength of this defensive team is their front. Yeah. Like, if you remember last year, the way that games were getting closed out last season yes. was by third down. Reddick getting sacks and those guys getting yep. sacks, getting pressure. Where is that pressure? I thought that that was going to be the strength of this defense again this year, but we haven't really seen it. I was actually going to say that if you, if you looked at that drive, even throughout the game, if you looked at Seattle, their offensive line did a great job against four-man rush of holding up. And again, when you're facing a quarterback that has not had the same amount of experience this season or even last, at some point you're going to have to heat him up. If you can't get there before, you have to do something to get him out of rhythm. He felt like he was in complete rhythm on the last drive. That's the last place you want a quarterback. Because again, they have enough at receiver that you're scared. Like they have skill guys oh, that you're yeah. afraid of. And so if he can get the ball near them, they can make those yeah. heroic type plays that you saw them make last night. I, I just didn't understand it. So I, that's the thing, right? Seattle played a really good game. Absolutely. Like, and they had to have that game. They were six and seven going in there trying to get in the playoffs. They don't know they're supposed to lose to the Eagles, right? So, right. so yeah, but that's the kind of thing. The Eagles are heading into this part. That we, well, they got Giants, Cardinals, Giants left. So right. we feel like they'll do okay against that schedule. But A, we're not 100% sure anymore. And B, after that comes the playoffs. And they're going to have to play teams like this and right. better. And right now they're not holding up. All right, so, so let's look at that side of it. That's the defense. Let's look on the other side of this. Ooh. That offense has now scored 17, 13, and 19 points in their last three games, all of them losses. They've been squeaking out wins all year long, but the bottom line of it is Shane Steichen, who was their offensive coordinator a year ago, is now coaching your Indianapolis Colts, yep. and they miss him. The offense Absolutely. hasn't looked right, and that has been sort of buried because they've been winning games. A hundred percent. I mean, you think about the rhythm that they had offensively last year, and there's, that's nowhere to be found right now. Even in games they're winning, they don't have that same, they don't have that same explosiveness as an offense, whether it's in the run game or the pass game. Everything feels different. Difficult 
for them right now. And, and, and inopportune penalties, like the Kelsey penalty, uh, you, you know, when they when they end up settling for a field goal early in the game, he moves the ball, you know, six inches or a yard or whatever. It's like these kinds of things keep showing up. It happened before, they, and they got some wins even when he had those. But there's too many mistakes. I, I want to make a point. I heard someone say, I can't remember who it was, oh, it was me <laughs> that Jalen Hurts now shares the league lead in turnovers. Yeah. If this was Dak Prescott, it was all anyway, but it would be like the lead story on the sure, evening yes. news, right? I, mean, I don't even think anyone even realizes that. He is turning the ball over at an alarming rate, which is exactly the opposite of what he did a year ago. Yeah, and I think that last year, they it was kind of a perfect storm. They were an incredibly healthy team. They were not having this bad turnover luck. They were having good luck on the other side of the ball where you get pressure, but it doesn't always equal sacks. Last year, it always equaled yep. sacks. So right now, I think I'm not going to say that Jalen Hurts is not a good quarterback. I'm I'm also not going to say that he's not making bad decisions. The Jets game comes to mind as one of the worst picks any quarterback through all season. Mm -hmm. But some of this is also luck. So I think it's turned against them in a bad way, but they aren't good enough to overcome it. You see, some teams are good enough to overcome those bad turns. And that goes back to what we've been saying about them all season. You can't put yourself in these close game situations because at some point it's going to jump on you. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, no disrespect to Drew Locke, but that pass that he threw is not a pass that you expect him to complete too many times, but he did it last yeah, night. That's right. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't know whether the turnovers are a symptom of a bigger problem. You talk about how it's difficult for them on offense or whether it's just Jalen Hurts is not having the year we expected him to have. Right. Whatever it is, they got to get it fixed. Uh, he has not looked healthy all year long. No. I, I know people, he, he, to his credit, because he's tough and yeah, football players don't complain, he's just not, his knee has not been fine basically the entire season long. And he still ran the ball last night 13 times. Well, I mean, I think yeah. that's a sign of desperation, desperation yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, right. the Eagles, they know how badly they need these games. Yeah, but, but make no mistake, their offense go, it, it's just no different than Buffalo. Like, when they really get into must-haves, their quarterback has to be a large yeah. part of it. Bill Parcells once said, you are what your record says you are. And the truth is, with all due respect to Bill, who I love, that's not really the case. Mm. Point differential through most of a season is actually a better indicator of how good a football team is than their one loss record. That may sound crazy, but it is true. Right now, the Eagles' point differential is plus 18, okay? That is in the same neighborhood as the Minnesota Vikings, who are 7-7. Seven and seven. Look at the really good teams in the NFL. The Niners, the Ravens, the Cowboys. Look at those point differentials. The Buffalo Bills have a point differential infinitely better than the Eagles, and that's why... I have been riding their bandwagon for the last few weeks because sometimes games they turn on a bounce here and a bad call there. But at the end of the day, how good you are usually shows up in this statistic. So the bottom line of it is the Eagles have been playing with fire all year long. They haven't really been that good all year long. And now it is starting to yeah. turn on them. This happens to some team every year is that we carry in some of our prior beliefs from what they did last season, some goodwill. And we're like, hey, but don't worry, they're still the Eagles, and then we watch what happens, and at some point we have to accept the same thing happened, I think, for the Chiefs this year. So, yeah, they're still the Chiefs. They'll be all right, but as sooner or later we have to accept, and I think point differential, sometimes we get confused. I think when we're talking to people, they think point differential is like a measure of, I guess it's a measure of how close your games are, but it's also, to your point, it's a measure of how good your team is. Over the course of an entire season, you will have a big point differential if you're a good team and a small one if you're a mediocre or bad team. And that's what's happening for them. I think they're just – we just have to accept that they're not what we thought they were. Yeah, I mean, look, the, their record is an indicator of, like, oh, it's okay, they're still the Eagles. Yeah. And, and the validity of that, right? right. Meant, they, they do have a, a, a champion's – you know, mentality and ability to win a close game and, 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 and big-time players they can rely on in the clutch. But over the course of a season, which is longer than, than people want to give it credit for, it does start to show up, right? And so, yeah, that point differential is a predictive stat. And I, what it's been telling us about the Eagles all year, Greeny, I think this is the point you're making, right, is at some point this is going to come back on them and they're going to start losing some of these games that they've been winning that are very close. Jeff to doesn't like it. Yeah. I can sell. Yeah. I can, he does not I like do not. this. I, I understand your point, and I agree to, to a certain level. 
this team has still beaten some really good teams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is not a team that has, has got an 18 point point differential and has played a cakewalk, right? They're playing the number one schedule. They beat the like they beat some really good football teams. That matters because at the end of the day, when you hit the playoffs, I don't care that the Cowboys have beat whatever. If they can't win on the road, they can't. There's a lot of different variables. So I would say I understand it, but I'm right. not all on board with your with your. Here's thought. the point that I will make. I'm not suggesting the Eagles aren't a good team. And yes, that does say something about a team that they can win close games, which is the point you just made. Against good teams. But what I am saying is everything that went their way last year has For gone sure. the other way. They were Great. remarkably healthy last year. They were remarkably stable. They lost both their coordinators. They've had injuries. The defense has turned Thanks. over completely. The quarterback True. never turned the ball over last year. Suddenly, he shares the league lead in turnovers. Yes. Those things have started to turn against them. It is very hard. Look, go back and find me all the teams that went to the Super Bowl one year and then cool. came back and made it the following oh. year after losing. There's very not hard. too many who have done it. It has turned on them. Now they have a short week. They have to beat the Giants both games or they're going to wind up a wild card. Yeah, and I, I think that to Graz's point, them winning those close games is a credit to how good that team is. Them being in those close games right. is evidence of the fact that they're not that much better than everyone else yeah. like they were last year. And I think yeah. when you talk about a championship contender, yeah, they're a championship contender, but they're going to have to go on a run where they win close game after close game after road game after close game. It can be done. They have the championship medal to do it, but it's a lot less likely than when we were looking at what they were doing last year.